Her Majesty Queen Noor of Jordan will present the Founders Award to Gareth Evans. Well, I always consider it a great privilege to join with a crisis group family on these occasions when we honor distinguished global citizens who have committed their personal and professional lives to the prevention and resolution of deadly conflict around the world. This year's gala is outstanding as well, as you have already noted, as a celebration of the group's 20th anniversary, two decades marked by many shifts in the nature of conflict. Throughout, Crisis Group has remained steadfast in its mission and ability to adapt to constantly changing circumstances. I have a special perspective and appreciation for your efforts, having lived and worked in for over 40 years in one of the world's most enduringly, not endearingly, intensely conflicted zones. Crisis group reporting and advocacy has amplified and reinforced the voices of those with whom I work, seeking constructive reform, conflict prevention and recovery, and sustainable peace in the Middle East, the Balkans, Central Asia, and Latin America is, is, those are the areas I have focused on. And having seen the, the value on the ground of the reporting uh, of Crisis Group, it's the reason why I'm particularly delighted tonight to present an award to one of the most significant and groundbreaking contributors to the organization's work on these issues and to its global stature. With so many others, I have witnessed with admiration the development of crisis groups, especially over the 10 years of Gareth Evans' leadership, as it more than quintupled in size, budget, and reach, expanding operations from a handful of countries in the Balkans and Central Africa to over 60 across four continents, and producing many hundreds of widely disseminated reports and briefings. This growth in size was matched by an exponential increase in impact as Crisis Group regularly succeeded in sounding early alarm bells in places where others had missed warning signs. And its wide reach was accompanied by a versatility in addressing a magnitude, a multitude of factors driving conflict. The roots the organization set down during this period significantly contributed to Crisis Group becoming the preeminent non-governmental conflict prevention and resolution body. Gareth was at the forefront of this transformation with the vision to catalyze the process, but also leading from the front in the true sense of the term. His tireless work ethic pervaded the group and created an organizational structure that mirrored his own drive and complemented his indomitable, irrepressible, take no prisoners leadership approach, always in tune to a distinctive tempo of his own, whether at work on a world stage or at the jazz clubs he would march his exhausted colleagues to after long days of work, no matter the time, no matter the city. To put it simply, there has been no one more instrumental in putting Crisis Group on the map, and his legacy at the organization has allowed his successors to build on his work and take Crisis Group from strength to strength. Gareth's public, I would be remiss if I didn't add that his public service also includes influential and enduring contributions to international relations thinking in fields of particular relevance to the work of many of us here. In particular, as you've already heard, on mass atrocity and conflict prevention, arms control and disarmament, the R2P, the responsibility to protect, concepts of niche diplomacy and cooperative security, among others. As we mark Crisis Group's 20th anniversary, I can think of no one more fitting to receive the Founders Award than Gareth, who more than anyone else was responsible for Crisis Group going, while going global while simultaneously becoming more local, and that is the key. 
As an admirer of his clear vision and dogged de dedication over the years, it is my honor to present this award to one of Crisis Group's very own, the Honorable Gareth Evans. Majesty Queen Noor, colleagues and friends, I'm absolutely thrilled and privileged to receive this award. My thrill and privilege only being tempered by a sense of guilt, I guess, first of all for being paid for doing this job and now being honoured for doing this job, which unquestionably was one of the most stimulating and satisfying jobs anyone could possibly do. I'm particularly delighted to be receiving this award, moreover, from Queen Noor, who, as most of you will know, has done as much, if not more, than anyone in this room in her own right to make this world a safer and saner place, not least through her passionate advocacy for ridding the world of nuclear weapons, the most indiscriminately inhumane weapons ever devised, and weapons whose benefits are way outweighed today's world by the risks that they generate. So thank you, Noor, for everything that you said. My, <laughs> Crisis Group's been a wonderful organization to work for, for reasons that I think speak for themselves, but are common really to all successful international NGOs. First of all, it had, from the outset, a very clear idea of the need that it was meeting. And the need, which was being unmet by diplomats or anybody else, was to provide a combination of field-based research, to accompany that with very sharp-edged policy prescriptions, and to accompany that with high-level advocacy, which would actually get those prescriptions into the heads of policymakers. The second thing we did, apart from having identified a need, was to stick very firmly to that mission throughout the course of our life as an NGO, something that NGOs don't always do. They lose their way. Crisis Group has not. The third thing we did was to be fiercely independent, providing advice that wasn't always what our government and other supporters wanted to hear, but it was what they needed to hear. And above all, finally, I think what made this organization so successful and what makes it continue to be so successful is its sheer relentless professionalism. Professionalism in the product quality, the administration quality, and the governance quality. And that's a product of many different things. It's a product, overwhelmingly, of the marvelous quality of Crisis Group's staff. It's a product of the marvelous quality of Crisis Group's board of governors, all famous people and justly famous people in their own right. So without stopping to single out any one of them, just let me say, like Casey Stengel said of the New York Yankees in 1958, I couldn't have done it without my players. <laughs> and nor could I have done it without the board over successive years, who, even though they were once described in the New York Review as a gang of poachers turned gamekeepers, and in one other left-wing blog as a blood-soaked elite. Well, as blood-soaked elites go, they've been a pretty substantial contributor to world peace, and I've been deeply grateful for them. Crisis Group stuck throughout that last 20 years to the task that it was so brilliantly equipped to do. Stuck to the task of ringing early warning bells, of identifying the appropriate policy responses for a myriad of different crisis conflict situations as they arose, and stuck very often also as well to the business of identifying, reconceptualizing answers to intractable policy problems. One notable example being uh, development of an approach to solving the Iran nuclear problem 10 years ago, which if the powers of be had taken notice of what we were prescribing, could have saved really 10 years of awfully protracted misery. Just one final word. This award is capable, I think, of being misconstrued, being described as it is as the Founders Award. 
I might have had something to do with building the organization, but I do want to make it clear that the foundations on which this organization has been built were really laid by others. And John Marie Gohan has already identified them, but let me say it again. There was the role played by Mark Malik Brown, our co-chair, who was present at the creation. There was the fantastic intellectual and financial support given to us from the outset by George Soros. There was the indefatigable support given by the late and sadly lamented Steve Solars, who generated worldwide incredible support for the organization in its fledgling days. But above all, there was the indefatigable, the energy, the vision, the determination, the perseverance of Ambassador Morton Abramowitz, who really does deserve the title as founder in chief. So to all those people, wonderful staff of this organization, I owe, indebt of, uh, I owe a debt of gratitude. I think we all owe a debt of gratitude. And with the continuing support and generosity of people like you throughout this room, I think Crisis Group is destined for another wonderful 20 years at least. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.